Hi guys, welcome to Genetics Creations. My name is Jen, these are my creations, and this channel is me showing you all how to make them. Welcome back my fellow Stitchers. Guys, I'm really excited to share with you my first official making it on my own Tunisian crochet project. I went with a gingham concept. I'm new to Tunisian crochet. It is a little bit different. I like to think of it as a mix of knitting and crocheting kind of combined in one, but it works like a typewriter form. So you are gonna see that you have a right side and you have a wrong side, which I still really like because it's got like that popcorn texture to it. But all I've done is just created a simple pattern and you're gonna simply repeat a series of rows and you're gonna alternate each set of rows as you keep going. You can keep this as a long open scarf or like I have done, I have done the seam and made it an infinity scarf. But here's the texture up close. Now let's dive in. All right guys, so I wanted to make my scarf three blocks wide. I'm gonna start with a slip knot and we're gonna just, um, I wanna make it three blocks wide to create my look and I'm gonna make it 10 stitches across. So I'm gonna do 30, plus I always have a stitch on the end and a stitch on the beginning to frame my work as I go. So I'm gonna chain 32. I just wanted to explain it in case you wanna change the width or the size of your boxes, you are able to customize this however you want. So chain 32. And to make our foundation chain or our foundation row, you're gonna flip and go into the second loop right there. So my fancy Nancy pens, skip that first one, go into the second. And you're gonna pull up one loop, keeping the loop on the hook. Keep going across, inserting the hook in every bump on the back side, and pulling up a loop, keeping it on the hook. I'll see you at the end. Now we have all of our loops and if you count, you should have 32 going across your hook. You're gonna start with a chain one and then you're going to yarn over pulling up two loops for that entire return pass until you have only one loop left on the hook. So now for this first row, pay attention because we're going to do something for 10 stitches and then we're going to change it for 10 stitches and then do something else for 10 stitches. So here we go. You guys, you're going to start with a purl stitch. So come on the back side of your yarn, insert into that first vertical bar, bring it back, and you're going to pull through. Then we're going to simple stitch. Insert the hook on the vertical bar and pull up. Purl stitch again, back side, insert, other side, pull through. And you're gonna keep repeating, this is now the simple stitch. You're gonna keep alternating for 10 stitches. So we've done four, one, two, three, four, ignoring that first loop. We've done four, we're gonna keep going for 10. So we've done our 10 stitches of alternating. Now we're going to Tunisian simple stitch for 10 stitches. So insert into the vertical bar, pull up for 10 stitches. And now we're going to go back to the first part of this row where you're going to start with the purl stitch and then simple purl stitch and then simple for another 10 stitches now we're at that last stitch this is where you always want to turn 
and see what looks like a traditional chain. You wanna grab that end stitch. This is how you keep everything nice and clean. You're grabbing the two loops. You'll see two loops, so grab both. And pull one. And now we're gonna do our basic return pass, just like we did on the other one, where you're gonna start with a chain one. And then you're going to continue yarning over, pulling up two until you have only one loop left. I'll see you there. Now for this second row, you're gonna wanna pay attention. So you see these vertical bars. This is our purl stitch, because it has one coming over. This one goes straight down, so that's our simple stitch. So you wanna make sure to alternate which version you're putting in. So for this purl stitch, we're gonna do a simple stitch. For this simple stitch, that's where you want your purl stitch. So you wanna make sure it's the opposite. Simple stitch for 10 stitches, purl. As you can see, that is what's going to start creating that texture on this square. Now we're to our simple stitches, so 10 of these. And now we're going back to our alternating 10. So we have a purl stitch there a simple stitch there. So I'm gonna start with simple stitch because it's the opposite of the purl one, and then purl on top of the simple. Simple stitch, purl on top of the simple. Now that we're at that last row, turn it again, make sure you grab both those loops and pull up. You're gonna do your return pass again, and I want you to keep repeating these rows. So on this one, we started with a purl. We, the second row, we did a simple, so you're gonna start again with the purl. Keep doing this for about 10 rows or until your block is about an even square. It might actually be less rows, to be honest with you. I've never done this pattern. We're making it as we go. So I think I'm gonna reevaluate and check in at five rows and let you know how it is. If we look like we're gonna switch at that point, I will let you know. I'll see you soon. So I ended up doing 10 rows. 10 rows gave me a nice even box. And now it's time for us to switch our pattern. So we want it to be checkered. So that means I need this box to now go up here and this pattern to go here. So we're not doing anything too fancy, I promise. You're just gonna switch up how you um, are doing the 10 stitches each time. So now we're on the 11th row and we're gonna do 10 Tunisian simple stitches. And then for the next 10, we are again going to start alternating. So purl, simple, purl, and simple for 10 stitches. And then for that last box, make sure you don't miss that little vertical bar that got pulled a little tight, but you're gonna t do 10 simple across. Grab that last one. And guys, just do your standard return pass. We're gonna do one more row together just to make sure you and I are on the same page. Okay. 
Okay, so once again, 10 simple. And since we did a purl stitch on this one, we're gonna wanna simple first, purl on that one all the way across. So simple, purl, simple, purl. Keep going. right back in that last stitch and then you're going to repeat your normal return pass so every 10 rows you're going to change so that the boxes alternate you're going to want to keep going so you're going to keep building up as this is going to be the length of your scarf this is the width you want to make it about 60 inches long. I say this in all my videos, I am tall, so you may want to make it slightly shorter. Sometimes I go even longer than 60 inches because I like my scarves longer. And at the end, I will show you how to work that final bind off if you are leaving it as a standard scarf. And if you want to take it one step further and turn it into an infinity scarf, I will show you how to do that as well. I will see you when you guys have your desired length. So I've been at this for a while and I now have a very long piece of work for my scarf and I am ready to finish it off. Now I am going to be turning it into an infinity scarf so I wanted to make sure whatever blocks I end on are the opposite as what I started with. So um, we have this pattern, this pattern, this pattern and it's opposite. So perfect. I am ready to do what's called binding off. And we are going to do that as such. We wanna maintain the same stitch. So what I'm gonna be doing is doing the same thing that we were, Tunisian simple, but instead of just keeping that on there, you're gonna pull up all the loops on the hook. And you're gonna keep doing that for 10 stitches. Now that we've done our 10 stitches, we want to bind off here, but still maintain the same stitch pattern. So we would normally do a purl stitch. So we're going to do that. But instead of keeping that on again, we are going to pull it through that last stitch here. We would do a simple stitch, but make sure to pull it all the way through. Keep alternating for the next 10 stitches. And now for that last block, as we finish it, we are going to do 10 more of the simple stitch, but pulling it all the way through. Make sure to grab that last one for our final slip stitch. And then we are ready to cut. When you cut, make sure this tail is long because we are gonna be using it if you are going to be moving forward with the infinity scarf version, you're gonna be using that to sew the ends together. If not, do one more pull through and you are set. So if you are someone that is going to simply leave this as a regular scarf, weave this end, weave this end in on the back side to better hide it, on the back side to better hide it, 
and then you are good to go. If you are looking to turn this into an infinity scarf, you're gonna wanna keep paying attention. Now, just like we do with sewing, you're gonna take your side that has the pattern, make sure there's no twists in it. You have your other side with the pattern. You're gonna put both of the pattern sides facing together. Grab your yarn needle and go ahead and get that all ready to go. And then we're going to simply match the chains for each of these and join them. So go through the two loops on this side. Find the two loops on this side. Make sure it's the one at the top of the stitch. So might have to do some fin dangling around to grab the right loop. And you're gonna begin going through all four loops. Once again, find the two, find the two, make sure that's on top and keep going. Now on this last one, I like to do one final knot. That's what allows it to stay secure. We're gonna weave in these ends, but otherwise you see a nice clean seam. There is your beautiful scarf or your infinity or your cow, however you call it. Hope you guys love it. Congratulations, you should be done now and you have yourself a wonderful, wonderful scarf. I chose to do mine with the Nothing Like Butter yarn by Lion Brand. Um, I've already done a review on it. I will put the links down below so you can see what other colors and what other things I've made with it, but it is one of my favorites. Probably for this scarf, I'm gonna leave the exact measurements down below, but I think I used about 400, 420 yards to make this scarf. I make my scarves a little longer. I say it over and over just because I'm taller. You will want to adjust based on your height and your preferences. You can wear it long or you can also wear it short, which I love about this scarf. Simple t-shirt, dresses up a basic outfit, good for all ages. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this fun project. As always, if you have questions or concerns or anything you guys are looking for, put it in the comments below. I prioritize all of that in my content. I also make sure to get back to each and every one of you fabulous stitchers. Otherwise, subscribe, stay tuned. I have more tutorials coming soon. Take care, keep stitching.